West Virginia. Take Where no. are you? Four and four, Big 12 play, six and four overall. Um, where where does Jerry Daggy rank among the Big 12 quarterbacks? It's kind of wonder, you know, that's I, I think it's a, a fair debate because you could try and tell me that he's he's up there in the top like uh three or four, or you could tell me that you know West Virginia fans might wish he had somebody else to push him. Uh love Letty Brown at the running back position. The wide receivers were young last year. I don't have a feel for the pecking order. Defensively, we've got some losses. Uh, obviously, Darius Stills is the most obvious one. Just a an absolute knife from the interior defensive line. He was always great at just jumping off the snap, getting into the backfield, causing all kinds of problems. But so is linebacker Tony Fields the second. Now, in on one hand, I feel like we found somebody who can come in and be that really high end linebacker in a guy named Lance Dixon, a former four star po- prospect from Penn State but he won't be there this spring. So it's not a question that we can get answered. He'll be arriving a little bit later. I thought the defense was great last season. So as we, as we look around this West Virginia team, I think the seeds are there for this to be a step forward. Um, Where, where are y'all looking for, for answers and information this spring? I think the offense better take a huge step forward, huge step forward, because I think the defense is going to take a pretty sizable step backward. Just not be, not to being like bad. It's just, this defense was awesome. Yeah, like they led the Big 12 in points allowed per drive last year. They were number one at 1.52. They were ahead of Iowa State. They were ahead of Oklahoma. And you look at everybody that they lost, both expectedly and unexpectedly in the transfer portal, there is a lot that they have to replace on that side of the ball. So it's only natural to think that it's going to be very difficult for them to maintain that kind of level. So on the offensive side of the ball, like you asked about Jared Dagey, I'd say he's middle of the pack in the Big 12. And you said that you could make an argument for top three or four. I think it better be a really good argument if West Virginia is going to be, you know, competing for anything or getting to a bowl game this year. Cause I, I just, I, I see a situation where if the defense was able, if they didn't lose so much in the defense, I thought the offense was better than the numbers suggested. And I thought we saw reasons for improvement. I think that they just really had trouble finishing in the red zone and especially in goal to go situations last year, they, 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 they settled for too many field goals. And I think that if you balance some of that out, all of a sudden that offense looks a lot better. And I think we're going to see that it's just on the other side of the ball. I feel like they're going to be giving more points back than they take. So I, I think this is like a six and six kind of seven and five season, but it's going to be interesting to watch that defense this spring to see if anybody pops and sticks out as somebody who's going to be a viable replacement, especially for the stills up front. Cause that's, that's too, th- those are really important pieces that you're losing from that defense. They were what made that they, they did so much for that defense just with their presence forget the production. So that's going to be huge. Tom, who do you take Spencer Sanders or Jared Deggie? Sanders. I, I just think that he could, it, God, it's Don't not you think like he's a top three or four quarter. Like you got to remember Texas. I, I'm just defending man Deggie because he was a little bit conservative, uh, but he was pretty solid, His solid, pretty decent. His numbers statistically are better than Spencer Sanders. Like, I think if you give him the supporting cast that Brock Purdy had, he might bring more to Iowa State. Like, I think he has a tremendous amount of upside, but they got to draw it out of him. Like, from what you've seen, um, some of the numbers there on the pass game, uh, he had four straight games of over 300-yard passing games, which is like pedestrian in the Big 12. But in that, he only had three completions over 40-plus yards, tied for seventh among Big 12 quarterbacks at 6.9 yards per attempt. So a little bit of a check down situation there, but some of that's with an offensive line that was struggling somewhat. But I would say that Jared Daigie's pretty like towards the upper tier of returning quarterbacks. See, I think Sanders was better than Daigie last year. Cause yeah, he had him on yards, but he also threw like 130 more passes than Sanders did. And I think that if you look at his touchdown interception ratio, he's like 14 touchdowns, four interceptions. That's great. But like you said, he was also kind of, you know, Johnny checked out. He wasn't really taking shots. He was, he was in that kind of game manager mode for them last year because their defense was so good. And I feel like with the defense taking a step back, likely you can't really afford Jarrett Daigie to just be, you know, the game manager type. You're going to need him to start making some plays. And I think at least Spencer Sanders with his legs provides me another avenue. If it's not there, he can maybe take off and get something for me and at least extend drives, pick, you know, like pick up first downs on third downs with, with his legs and stuff like that. I don't have the much, as much confidence in Daggy to do that. So I would take Sanders. I, I think I probably agree with Sanders, but I also 
some of this is is teammate dependent, right? So yeah. West Virginia last year, they could not throw a lick outside the numbers. Now, part of that may be Deggy. Part of that might be that their outside receivers weren't worth a damn, right? But they, their, their production outside the numbers was was poor. Not quite as poor as their offensive line's run blocking. Now, yeah, I, I, I get it. You know, Letty Brown had 1,000 yards, blah, 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 blah. They were 116th in rushing success rate, right? They were 122nd in rushing opportunity rate. They popped a couple long ones that really skewed what their rushing stats look like, but consistency, they were terrible running the ball. And they also couldn't push the ball down the field at all with the through the air. So basically, defenses just sat, like tried to sit on the short stuff. And Deggy actually threw the short stuff fairly well. I mean, mainly just hit the bat, hit hit the backs and the slots over and over again. But like they were you know, okay throwing the ball defensively. Like, look, man, West Virginia is not a team that recruits on a level to where you feel confident that they're going to be able to replace guys, you know, like like Sills. It's just not. Not there. And then they've lost a ton in the defensive backfield. If you go back, listen to what Tom said. He didn't say, I think they will improve a ton on offense. What word did he say? He said, I think they better better. improve a whole whole lot on offense because he knows what's going to happen or thinks he knows what's going to happen on defense. And I agree with him. I'm not – sometimes it can be deceptive. This could be a step back on the field year for West Virginia while while Coach Brown still has them going in the right direction overall, I, I think. And like the offensive line's inability to block and their inability to get the ball outside the hash marks kind of gives you an idea of why they struggled so much in the red zone. Because once defenses were able to just kind of settle in, take away everything that they were capable of doing, they just didn't have an avenue to beat them in that, in that kind of crowded area. Exactly.